Hello, this is Spike Lee, and you're watching Madame Noir. And in French, that means black woman. Support my new film. Go to kickstarter.com. Well, we started Monday, and we're on our 20th. We have 28 days more, and our goal is 1 million 250. Think about Kickstarter. If you don't meet your goal, you don't get it. And that's the number one mistake that the co-founders of, of Kickstarter told me from the get. Have a goal that's doable. Because if you don't reach your goal after 30 days, if God is willing and the creek don't rise, we will make our goal. And those five dollars add up. And, you know, people have to network, tell your friends. That's one less trip to Starbucks, one less pack of cigars. How much Molly costs? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. hey, hey, one less Molly. <laughs> That's just funny, though. <laughs> one less Molly, come on. <laughs> As people of color, African Americans, we're kind of a little behind on technology. So we're not really hip to this whole Kickstarter crowd funding thing. But we gotta get on it. And I've been accused like Spike Lee, you're established, you're knocking at all the other young filmmakers who are on Kickstarter. Number one, I'm, I'm bringing people to Kickstarter that never even heard of Kickstarter and would never even pledge those films because they didn't even know nothing about it. So I think that's, that, that argument is, is, is ludicrous. <laughs> ludicrous. And the film is about human beings, human beings of color. They're addicted to blood. I would say addicted to, to, to blood and sex. I'm going to add that. No, they're not vampires. No, this is not going to be the black twilight. And definitely no, this is not going to be blackula. I mean, if you were in the industry, you would know that the climate is di different, very, it's a different climate now. For example, Steven Soderbergh, the, all those Ocean Eleven films, I mean, one of the most successful directors in Hollywood today, he retired from Hollywood. So, if he does that, I think that's a clear indicator of how it is. I mean, has anybody gotten the films, seen the films out this summer? There are 28 films that have been released this summer that are about 3D, special effect, the world's gonna end, people flying through the air, their sequels or old TV shows. I mean, like, that's what they're making. That's what Hollywood's checking for. I'm not hating on it. The majority of the films are like that. And a, a film like this would have been an act of futility. As my man Mike Tyson would say, it'd have been ludicrous. <laughs> the, bang, the bang on Hollywood doors trying to get this film made. I wasn't doing it. My favorite film this summer is Fruitvale. I know Harvey Weinstein is great, but that was a coincidence that uh, with the opening of the film, you had the Trayvon Martin. But uh, films could st spark change personally. People come up to me the last 20 years saying they went to a historically black college because of school days. They went to college because of school days. So it can happen. It's a great travesty of, of justice. And the thing about it that it's gonna probably go on for, for years. But the question was, would I wanna do a movie? And I said, no. As a filmmaker, I think, if there is a film, I just hope it's a documentary first before they do the narrative film about that. Because the same reason why I did the documentaries on Katrina instead of a movie. I want to talk to, I want to talk to the real people. People who were holding on to their children by the fingertips and got swept away. I don't want to have an actor playing that. Maybe later. But I want to document with the people who were there. And ever how do you approach Trayvon and should be in the documentary, but that's just my opinion. The first approach.